Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California here in Studio MC3 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you haven't already done so. And for those of you who have, thank you so much for subscribing. And with that, let's go ahead and get into the stories for this episode. From ZDNet.com, patches are ready for Red Hat, Ubuntu, and others affected by Linux kernel flaw. Patches are in the works for several Linux distributions affected by a newly discovered flaw in the Linux kernel that could let a local user crash or run programs as an administrator. Admins running Ubuntu, some Red Hat systems, Debian, and other distros are advised to patch a moderately serious memory corruption flaw affecting the NTTY write function in the Linux kernel up to 3.14.3. So uh, get, your, get, your, uh, get your stuff patched up. From itworld.com, Linux Mint 17 release candidate is now available for download. Check it out. The final version of Linux Mint 17 is due by the end of the month, but you can download the release candidate right now. It comes in 32 or 64-bit versions in the Cinnamon or Mate desktop environments. So check it out. From ZDNet, hands-on with PC Linux OS 2014.05 KDE and LXDE, the Linux with something for everyone. This is from uh, ZDNet's uh, Jamie's Mostly Linux Stuff blog. This is something I don't get into very often. He writes, uh, writing about a new release that has not been announced on DistroWatch. The latest set of PC Linux OS ISO images were made available last week, both in 32 and 64-bit versions in a variety of desktops. As always, the standard distribution is KDE, and there are community versions with LXDE and Mate, plus a full Monty distribution. So definitely check out the blog post. From the Enquirer.net, Mozilla begrudgingly brings Netflix support to Linux with DRM in Firefox. Software developer Mozilla has announced the implementation of proprietary HTML5-based digital restrictions management, otherwise known as DRM, in its Firefox web browser, such as that used by media streaming services. EME and CDM encryption are, are already supported in other web browsers, but up to now, Mozilla has resisted adding them to Firefox in protest to what it sees as imperfections that make them no better than their predecessors. So they're finally getting with the program. What a fresh of breath air. From Lilliputing, Cloudsto EVO is a $160 Linux mini PC with VGA out. UK retailer Cloudsto is adding a new small form factor low power Linux PC to its lineup. The Cloudsto EVO is a palm-sized computer with an ARM Cortex-A9 quad-core processor and Ubuntu 12.10 software. Pretty awesome. From the register, the 10 hut, the Linux Foundation welcomes three new recruits. Two companies that represent the profound changes rippling through the tech industry have joined the Linux Foundation. Distributed Linux OS company Core OS and networking software specialist Cumulus Networks announced on Monday that they had joined the Open Source Advocacy Collaboration and Support Group. These two companies make technologies that split software from hardware and that place an emphasis on complex tasks run via software on a shifting sea of cheap, no-frills IT gear. Uh, in addition to that, Rackspace has also joined the project. So, pretty interesting. From the VAR guy, Canonical updates Ubuntu Linux mobile installer for Android. Dual booting Canonical's Ubuntu Linux and Android on tablets and smartphones has moved a small step closer to reality with the release of a new version of the Ubuntu dual boot installer, codenamed M9. The release offers support for, for Ubuntu OS upgrades along with a slew of other enhancements. Uh, the dual boot installer is for developers only and always will be. However, uh, they are not building it with the goal of encouraging us plain folk to use it to install Ubuntu on our Android mobile devices. Still, 
it's an important tool for preparing Ubuntu to run well on mobile hardware, which is a central pillar to Canonical's grand vision of converging Ubuntu across different types of devices. So cool, but you know, us mortals, us mere mortals may not necessarily uh, find much use for it, if, that, if that's possible. That'll do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Please do subscribe if you haven't already done so. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. See you then. Bye.